flying pig. Welcome to another video in advanced mechanics and this is something that I do with my students and this one has been uh, graffitied by my students. Um, and this one here we hang from the ceiling and we make the pigs fly. And of course you've all heard the saying, oh yeah, when pigs fly. Well they do fly in the physics lab and we can actually calculate their velocity. So if we have a ceiling and to that ceiling we have a little swivel and we attach our pig to that swivel. Looks like it's got big ears, but that's the wings. So we attach it to a swivel and we turn the pig on and it goes around in a circular path. Okay. And what we can do is we can do some calculations and the challenge is to try and find the velocity, the tangential velocity of the pig. And we can change the length of the string we can change the power of the pig. It's got two batteries in there, so we can change the power of that pig by masking tape up one battery and then putting aluminium foil around it, and that would halve the power of the pig and therefore change its velocity. So we come up with different scenarios to change our velocity of the pig, and the students have to try and calculate the tangential velocity. So how do they do that? Well, if you think about what we did in the last video, in the last video in totem tennis, we knew the angle. Well, here the, we don't know an angle, but we do know this length here. And I'm going to tell you that the length of the string, what was the length of the string? Point, I was writing this right, 0 0.84 meters. And the mass of the pig was 145 grams. So we use an electronic balance, we measure the mass of the pig, we use a rule and we measure the length of the string. So the next thing to think about is, okay, well, how can I calculate the radius? And how can I calculate theta? Well, in the last totem talents problem, we actually knew theta, and by knowing theta and a side, we could calculate radius, but we don't know that here. So we get our, at our good, good old uh, ruler, and we measure the radius here we have some experimental error when it comes to our measuring and how the students decide to measure that. They might take a picture of it's going around, they might use a scale, they then can measure the, the radius that way. They can just hold up a ruler. There's lots of different ways that they can do that, but let's just say they hold up the ruler, they measure it, and they find that the radius is 0 0.62 meters. So knowing that information now, we can calculate the size of the angle. And so we're going opposite divided by hypotenuse, so in that instance, it's sine. Okay, so sine theta is equal to opposite r over the hypotenuse, which is 0 0.84. We know that r is 0 0.62, and therefore theta, when we work it out, turns out to be 47.7 degrees. Okay, so we do that and take the inverse sign, and we get 47.7 degrees. So let's write that in. So now we have those options there. Now how does that help us calculate the velocity of the pig? Well, remember that that pig, and I'm going to redraw it here, that pig has the pull of gravity acting on it, Fg. It then has the tension force of the string, and that tension force, remember, also has x and y components. And remember, the y component is equal to the what, equal to gravity, it's just in the opposite direction. So we can sort of put that in there, F G. And um, so we have this horizontal component, F T X. And we said before that that was equal to the centripetal force because it was the net force causing the object to rotate. So the centripetal force is calculated the same way as we did what we did before. So we needed to calculate, we know the size of this angle now. We said we just found it ago, which was 47.7. .7. And so we needed to find out Fg. And we know that Fg is equal to Mg. So the mass of the pig was 0 0.1, whoops, 145 times 9.8. And when we do that, the pig turns out to exert a force of 1.42 newtons. So the force 
and it's acting on the pig due to gravity is 1.42 newtons. And so now, of course, we know this, we know an angle, we can find out our centripetal force. So our centripetal force is equal to, and that's opposite over adjacent, which is tan. So then we go, okay, that is, um, what do we call it? 1.42 tan. 47.7, 1.56 newtons. So our centripetal force causing the pig to turn is 1.56 newtons. So of course, now we go back to our understanding of what centripetal force is. We said that centripetal force is equal to mv squared on r. And we know that equals 1.56. So let's plug that in over here, 1.56. And we want velocity. So we have the mass of the pig, which was 0 0.145 v squared on r. In this instance, r, we calculated, we measured, I should say, 0 0.62. So v squared is we times those two together, divide by 0 0.145. So it's 1.56 times 0 0.62. We divide that by 0 0.145. And then, of course, we take the square root of that. Okay, so we take the square root of that, and we end up with the final answer of 2.58 meters per second. So that's the speed of our little piggy flying around at 2.58 meters per second. Pretty cool. That's how you do it for, um, for a flying pig. Hope that makes sense to you. And uh, in the lab, change the length of the string, change the power, and you come up with different calculations. But it's the same sort of way as we did totem tennis. I think what we're gonna get into soon is banked corners. So let's make some more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.